Can you explain the three tweeter array or the the whole middle section there with the tweeter mid range? What exactly is beam forming and why should you have it? What does it do? Okay. Uh, the way I like to explain it is you start with a conventional tweeter, right? And so um, that tweeter has pros and cons, right? So um, one of the con or a couple of the cons of that design or limitations of that design is that at the lower end of a normal dome tweeter, it's going to have very wide dispersion. At the higher end, it's going to start beaming and, and then everything in between. Um, but typically can sound pretty good when it's used within its bandwidth. Other limitations are going to be how much you can use it at low frequency. So it's already you can say that's not that's not ideal. Adding a waveguide um, creates a lot, uh, tackles a lot of those cons and creates a lot of performance enhancements. The waveguide now allows you to control the dispersion pattern horizontally, vertically, over much wider bandwidth. So now we've we've got huge improvements. Also, you can extend it a little bit lower in frequency and or lower the distortion. You use it how you, how you want as a designer, but those two, it unlocks those two benefits. And you could stop there and that could be a very good um, design speaker because then you can integrate uh, to the woofer's dispersion. But it uh, is also limited in thermal capability and it is limited in low frequency um, capability, but also how far down in frequency can you control it? Now that's where we start talking about the beam forming um, and, and how we look at horizontal versus vertical directivity control. So by adding the, the two mid tweeters, if you will, above and below, more or less superposed on that waveguide, you've taken the waveguide tweeter design and now you can extend the bandwidth another octave um, and actually take the distortion even lower. And S7, for example, the lowest distortion point is in that really, really critical 800 to 2 kilohertz range. Um, that's the lowest point of distortion. But all that's now being controlled by these really lightweight transducers. At the same time, now you've extended the, the vertical control in you know, how, the, how the wavefront's coming off the speaker. It's limited to you know, plus or minus 20, 25 degrees, which is plenty to cover your seating but it's, it's narrow enough to start eliminating some of the ceiling and floor reflections. That's the, that's the heart of the beam forming. Then as you look at, you can kind of see the picture behind me, Oop, wrong arm. Uh, as you add the woofer pairs, you extend that beam forming another octave and another octave lower. So effectively you could keep expanding that array and get the beam forming lower and lower frequency. So to kind of put it all together, an S7, will beam form down to close to two, 300 Hertz. Um, and S5 is more like five, 600 Hertz. Um, so that kind of shows you, yeah. So, so you can kind of see the, the symmetry um, is part of what makes it work. Um, so you use, you use the advantage of the, the geometry, the positioning, and then within the crossover, it becomes a rather complex crossover, but, but how you use each pair um, together allows you to, to control that vertical pattern. Are the three tweeters identical, or is the center tweeter the only one that's the beryllium and the other ones aren't? They're very similar in uh, motor structure design, but the, the beryllium is the only one in the center. And then the, the two mid-tweeters are made out of the same texture material as the woofers. Mm -hmm. And that's mainly good. because they didn't need to play. They're, they're pretty much done by 4 kilohertz. Um, it's pretty complex how they're actually used from 1K to 4K. Um, that's how the beam forming works. That's why when people say, are you using a link with Riley or Butterworth crossover? And, and I say, no, because it's, th those aren't the, we're not trying to make electrical ideals. We're trying to make the outcome in the room acoustically happen. And then the components, the crossover points and all that kind of follow within reason, right? You can't make a tweeter play at 500 Hertz or whatever.